Hello and welcome back to Man of the Ants takes a look at the VR Museum of Fine Art. So if you watched the last video, you'll know that this took a little longer to record than I thought it might do, so I've split it into two. So, coming right up is the second half. Enjoy. Alright then, so, oh it's Pieta. Oh yes, thought that was an L. Pieta. Pieta. Michelangelo versus Medieval. Ooh. Ooh, okay. We'll start over here. What do we have here? Ah, aha, ah ah. This figure was rep was presented by a group of people from Rurutu to representatives of the London Missionary Society stationed at Raiatia in August 1821. It was given of this as a symbol of their conversion to Christianity. Oh, religion. The figure has a hollowed body and head covered at the back by a detachable carved panel it has 30 small figures distributed over its surface, forming facial and other features. I mean, I was kind of hoping to tell me a bit more about the uh, statue itself. Does it represent a particular religion we're aware of? Where are the people of Rurutu from? Is it African? Kind of sounds African. Hmm, okay. Now we have the Pieta by Michelangelo in around 1498-99. It's a work of Renaissance sculpture by Michelangelo Buonarotti. Is that Michelangelo's surname? I never knew that. Buonarotti. Arotai. Hmm. House in St. Peter's Basila, Basilica, Vatican City. It is the first of a number of works of the same theme by the artist. So commissioned by blah 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 blah. Depicts the body of Jesus on the lap of his mother Mary after the crucifixion. She looks quite young there still, doesn't she? It's unprecedented in Italian sculpture. It is an important work as it balances the Renaissance ideals of classical beauty with naturalism. So that's why she looks a little bit younger than you may expect for someone who's got a... How old was Jesus when he was crucified? 30? I want to say 32. I want to say 32. I don't know where I'm getting that from. I might just pull that out of, the, uh, out of thin air. It's a little bit missing just there by the look of it, which looks like it might be a miss on the uh, 3D scanning rather than anything. But again, aside from that, it's absolutely amazing, isn't it? And here we have another Pieta. Unknown 16th century, painted oak. A little bit different to Michelangelo's. In the doleful era. Mm-hmm. This proportion of the body is a response to a moral perspective seen in, seen in much European Gothic art at the times. The size of the woman in comparison to the smaller male indicates that the subject depicts Mary and Jesus. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Not much more information. Holding his little uh, shorts up, which is very nice of him. So we don't get a little flash of nudity. So that's interesting. So it's newer than Michelangelo's sculpture over there. But obviously very, very different. And flat at the back. Lazy, lazy sculptor. Couldn't even bother to finish off the back. Unlike Michelangelo over there, getting full marks he did for his work. Let's uh, spin myself around a little bit so I'm not tangled up on my cable. The rel <sighs> reliquary? Reliquary. Reliquary. Lair Why is that so hard to say? Reliquary. Reliquary. There we go. Reliquary, bust of a saint. Flanders, Brabant. Uh, around 590 to 580 BCE. Didn't expect it to be quite that old. Um, hmm. Nothing provided as to her identity past the fact that it was a reliquary bust from Flanders made in the beginning of the 16th century. So where does... BCE come from. She is stunning in her presence and must capture the attention of all who walk by. The details of her costume and hair accessories alone can be the sources of information as well as fascination. One almost feels the need to bend down in order to hear what she is about to whisper. It's very cool. It's a little bit different to being 
16th century rather than you know 600 BCE still and I'm guessing that if you did go to wherever well cool hairstyle as well if you did go to wherever this is located I've immediately forgotten uh, da, 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 da. LA it's in the LA County Museum of Art you might not be able to get anywhere near this close to I'm guessing you wouldn't have thought so Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, so... What is that? Oh! Oh, hello! Where am I going? Doesn't say anything on there about any other exhibits. Oh! But there are more exhibits! Let's just get rid of that. You're no use to me whatsoever. So we have Monet's Water Lilies. 250 oil paintings painted during the last 30 years of his life. He went mental for it. Norman Rockwell. I, I, yeah, I, I recognise that. Couldn't have told you who it was if I saw it, but I do recognise it. And I recognise this one as well. Let's get up close to this one a sec. Yeah, again. Again, spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. Sunday on La Grande Jatte. And then we have some Monet's. I'm just going to slightly readjust my headset. So you do lose just a little bit of the depth, I would have said, of a traditional oil painting. I imagine it's a little bit more layered then these would give away. That would be some pretty um, intense scanning to get that across. I like this. It's kind of just a mess of colour, and I'm not, you know, it's not quite abstract. Obviously, it's supposed to be water lilies. But, um, I really like that. That's awesome. I normally much prefer depressing art, is the only way I can describe it. I only have one art print in my possession. And that is the execution of Lady Jane Grey, because it's really depressing and miserable and beautiful all at the same time. And I absolutely adore that picture. I saw it online years ago. I don't know where now. Is it before I was even on Reddit? I don't even know. It was a long time ago. I absolutely fell in love with the picture. It's my background for ages. And then a family member got it as a present for me, a print of it for a Christmas or birthday or something. I can't remember now. Mm. Well, that's nice. That's a bit grayer, a bit duller. Okay. Okay. Do I recognize that one? I think I recognize that one. Nighttime lilies. Dusk lilies, if I had to guess. And then some nice summer lilies. All bright, bright and shiny. Okay. Let's, oh, you can teleport miles. That's beautiful. I don't often do that. What do we have here? The Ioned? Ioned? Virgil's masterpiece. Let's go. Hello. Aeneas carrying Anchises from Troy. I've absolutely butchered those names, I'm 100% sure. Look on the detail on that, though. Look at the little bits of damaging and wear and tear that have been picked up and modelled. It's insane, really. I won't read all of this because there's a lot of a lot of text there. Priest of Neptune. I wonder how old it is. Does it say how old these things are? 1716. Oh, they look older than that. Just sort of generally going by the sort of wear on the statues. They do look older than 18th century. Maybe that's just more how they were sculpted more than uh, 
an effect of their age. Or maybe they were just touched a lot. Maybe that's possible. So what is that? Layako on. Layako on. What do we have here? Athena. Honestly, I could not be more impressed with this. If you do have a VR headset, you you have to try this out. It's a free application on... Uh... Oh, it's a bloody wall again. Keeps getting them away. Free application on Steam. Do look for it. Do have a look. And if you do enjoy it, do donate. I'm almost certainly going to be donating to this as soon as I uh, finish off this recording because this is amazing. It's exactly what... It's exactly what you want from VR, and it's so well done. I mean, the environments could do with a bit of sprucing up, but you're not here for the environments. And just being able to come here and just see, see things that, again, you would never see in real life, and see them up close without having to battle crowds for them. Why is that part of the 3D scan that was a little bit missed off again? Is that why they're a little bit grey? I wonder. The same with in between our fingers there as well. I wonder if that's supposed to be there or not. That's Aphrodite, the god of beauty, mother of Aeneas. The person whose name I am but Oh, there's a little person behind. So not only is he carrying Aeneas, or is Aeneas carrying someone else? What was it? Anchises. Not only is he carrying Anchises, but Anchises is dragging a small child with him as well. Just to make sure that, you know, this person's going to be very well overworked. Okay. I am conscious that this has taken a little bit longer than I perhaps anticipated. So busts, carved sculptures of heads, assorted varieties. Well, let's start over here, because then I can untangle myself. Bust of Caracalla. One eight eight to two one seven. Formerly Marcus Aurelius Severus, Antonius Augustus. Again, there's a lot of text there that I won't read, but if you need to read it, or if you'd like to read it, I guess. Well, it's all on Wikipedia anyway, it's just taken from there, so you can look up there, or you can just pause the video, take a little look. Here you have Titus. We'll go and look at the other bust before we work back up to the other statue there. Julius Caesar. Copy of the Roman original. Mm -hmm. Represents presenting a Roman general with the attributes such as tunic, armor, and plaudamentum. Plaudamentum. The nose was also restored, as well as the chin and part of the left ear. Mm. And who do we have over here? Demosthenes, Demosthenes, however you pronounce that, with knitted brow. Well, he is looking a bit mm, quizzical. An orator who passionately opposed the Macedonian control of mainland Greece. He spoke against the capitulation of Athens in particular, and his posthumous portrait was erected in the Athenian marketplace around 280 BC after his suicide. No other way to go, mate. The head in the British Museum is one of a number of Roman marble copies of the original statue. It is one of the first psychological portraits, and obvious, obviously, arguably, the greatest. So when it says psychological, I'm guessing it just means because it depicts an emotion rather than just being... A blank expression. But here we have Last of Augustus. He said to be the greatest emperor in all of Roman history, and the title Father of His Country was well deserved. He made many wise and clear decisions throughout the provinces, boasting that he had transformed Rome from a city of brick into a city of marble. 
There we go. That's the father of the Roman Empire. And here we have not well, I suppose, in technically. Let's see what he's done here. See what Finn's done. This is the Hall of Busts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I see. Bacante Cucci. Jean Baptiste Clezinger. Clezigne? I don't know. No other information whatsoever. But let's have a look at your face. It's amazing, really, isn't it? Again, just, oh, this is this is honestly blown my mind, mind a little bit. It really has. I was not expecting anywhere near this kind of level of quality. Oh, it's like a funeral. It looks like it's supposed to be like a funeral topping, doesn't it, with the dark marble underneath? When I say funeral, I quite, of course meant casket. Funeral topping, Jesus. That's what you put on the cake at a funeral, like a wedding topper. Idiot. Amazing. So, I think, then, that is everything. Yeah, it doesn't go up any higher, that I can see. So I think that is it. So let's just head back downstairs. I'm assuming if I go in here, we'll just go back down. There we go. Wow. So, there you go. Oops. I really hope you enjoyed the Museum of Fine Art. The VR Museum of Fine Art, I should say. I... I, yeah, I can't really say how amazing this is. I really can't. Oh, of course, now you can see the second level. Now that I know it's there, I can see it quite clearly. But yeah, I mean... I said it before, but it's what VR is all about. It's what VR is all about. And it's such a high-quality application as well. So if you do have a VR device of any form, do go onto Steam. Anything back there? I can't even go in there. No. Do go on to Steam and download it. It's a free application. If you do get any form of enjoyment, do donate using the uh, tipping jars that are, do that are dotted around. I will definitely be doing so in a minute. Because, um, yeah, it's an incredible piece of work, really. It really is. So if you did enjoy this, please do click the like button. It would be very much appreciated. I do like to know that you like things. Also, of course, you can sub uh, subscribe. There we go. That's the word I was looking Well, you can subscribe to keep up to date with all my upcoming videos and series and the such like. Or get hold of me on... Get hold of me. You can follow me on Twitter, that sort of thing, to keep up to date with non-video-related goodness. But, of course, including video-related goodness. You just get some other inane ramblings and retweets and the such like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I see them. Or you can tweet me, of course. Otherwise, I shall see you next time in some other VR adventure. Thank you very much for joining me.